guys, so this is supposed to be a Japan haul video. These are Kusukabe watercolors, but when I was looking at the colors I bought, I realized I'd purchased mainly colors that are bright, vivid, exciting, not necessarily the best colors to judge a watercolor line by because most of us are going to be really reliant on the workhorses, the staple colors. So I am going to swatch these for you guys today, but I also have the 25 piece set coming in the mail. So I will check in with you guys with a follow up video with the full set. So this is just kind of like an exploration and unswatch and there's going to be a follow up video, which will be the full unboxing swatch and then I will do the field test. So I picked up these colors at Tokyo Hans in Kyoto and this was back in March and the colors that I picked up are Permanent Yellow Light, Cadmium Red, New Cadmium Red, Neo, Aurora Pink, Ruby Red, Aurora Blue, Monst Monastrel Blue, and Van Dyke Brown. and. These are the colors I thought would be interesting to explore. These were colors I'd never heard of here in the US and these are just kind of fairly common colors. So we're gonna do a little bit of swatching today and then we're gonna finish this up when the full set arrives. I'm going to be placing these Kusukabe watercolors as well as the ones that are coming in the mail in this homemade watercolor palette. And I have a quick review of this here on the channel that you guys can check out. It has 40 half pans, so there should be plenty of room for growth. And something else that I really like is that it has magnets on the bottom, which holds these half pans in place and they can be placed elsewhere. You could remove just the ones you need and set up a mini palette if you wanted to do, say, a limited color challenge. So this is actually going to make organizing and rearranging my colors much easier. So for this haul video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna swatch these in their tube form, and then we're gonna go ahead and place them in our nice travel palette, making sure to label the sides of the half pans. We're going to be doing our swatching today on Langton Prestige 100% cotton watercolor paper. This is a rough press pad. And while this sets up, we're gonna take a look at what is on our tube. And I feel like I'm gonna have to get involved with some Google Translate. So it's a five milliliter tube. The pigment name is, or the pigment number is listed on here. This has PY1 on it. There is a light fastness rating, it looks like. And then it's also ranked into series A, B, and I think I just bought mostly, no, I bought one C as well. So I think you will have to check out the full unboxing swatch for all the information. That is what I think. Today, I'm going to use a Cotman synthetic brush and we're doing a gradiated wash and then we're also doing a mass tone swatch. And I'm mostly interested in seeing how these colors differ from what's available in the US market. And I'm really interested in seeing how Aurora pink differs from say, um, opera rose, for example, or like a quinacridone rose. So another type of hot pink. Also kind of curious how it compares to, say, ice pink from PH Martins. Ew. I wonder if this bit of nasty up here. But that is a really hot pink. I don't know if the camera can even do it justice, but this is a fluorescent that I am sure 
would fade quickly over time. That's all the more reason to get to doing light fast testing. And this is Aurora Blue. So I think all of their Aurora colors, or I think the Aurora colors are meant to be neons. Now let's let these swatches dry. So all of these colors are fairly bold, fairly saturated, but I'm not seeing any granulation, not in the Van Dyke Brown, not in either of our two blues, and certainly not in our reds or our yellow. And usually you would start to see at least some granulation in say browns like this. And this is something that I noticed with the Turner watercolors, as well as with my Magellos and my Holbein. And I'm wondering, if for Japanese watercolors, they process the pigments differently, um, maybe finer, maybe sedimentation isn't something they really want. Um, sedimentation can be iffy when it comes to reproduction. We've certainly gotten a lot better about how we can scan and capture that effect so that it doesn't look muddy. But if you're printing on um, inexpensive papers, the sedimentation can definitely take a turn for the worse in terms of effect. So if you are making watercolors, watercolors that are meant to appeal to artists of a variety of ranges, then having watercolors that maybe don't sediment and are more staining than granulating, maybe that is, a, is something that um, those companies, maybe that's what those companies are doing. Now, if any of you guys know or can point me to any literature that would explain that, I would love to see it. Sometimes on the consumer end, it can be difficult to get information about art supply products. So they're not quite dry yet. I'm gonna go over the colors with you guys. We're gonna fill these half pans and then hopefully by then these will be dry. So we have permanent yellow light. We have cadmium red neo. We have aurora pink, which is a high highlighter pink. It is more fluorescent than most uh, opera roses. We have ruby red, which is a very cool red. We have aurora blue, which is still kind of wet and it's kind of a highlighter or an ice blue. We have monostral blue, and then we have Van Dyke Brown. And I'll be really interested to see how the other colors in the set I've ordered, how they compare to these in terms of whether or not they granulate, they sediment out, whether or not they're staining. And I think after these dry, I'm gonna have to do a lifting test to see how well they lift. So for these, since I'm going to be mixing basically open stock with a set, I want to make sure I keep track of what I've purchased and what I own. So I am going to, I'm looking to see, they, are, they do have numbers on them, which would actually be pretty easy. So I'm just going to write the number, I think, and maybe even the pigment on it. And we're going to start with permanent yellow light. I'm going to leave these to dry. I'm going to put them back in here, but I'm going to put them all together. That way they're kind of easy to access. When I'm rearranging this palette for the larger set that's coming in. All right, there we go. So thank you guys so much for joining me for this Japan haul unboxing swatch. I can't wait to see you guys again when we finish this out. Well, we work on another stage of this and we swatch 
the other colors that are coming in the mail. You can find Kusukabe watercolors on Amazon, um, or rather Kusakabe. Um, I purchased these in person open stock from Tokyo Hans, which is a large department store chain in Japan. So if you have nice Japanese department stores, you might be able to find them. Or if you have stores that regularly carry Japanese art supplies, you might be able to find them. You can check the link below. I'm going to pop as much information as I can in there for you. Check the description below. Sorry. And when I do the full review, I'll make sure I have all of the information ready for you guys so you guys can make an informed decision about these watercolors. So thank you guys so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you again really soon. Bye guys. Out of sight, out of mind. I totally forgot to get back to you guys with this. So I promised you a lift test. We're using, and I'll zoom in. We are using a Cotman synthetic brush just because it's got stiffer bristles. Yellow seems like it would lift. Red seems like it will lift. I betcha Aurora pink is staining. Yeah, pretty staining, although it does lift a little bit. And of course, if we wanted better lifting, we would blot these out. Ruby red seems to lift. Aurora blue was interesting because the back says pigment not listed. What does that even mean? Is it dye based? Is that where we're coming from? All right. So it looks like all of the colors from today will at least lift a little bit. They will move around. So I am eager to see how they all handle when I have the full set and we can start doing the field test. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you again really soon. Bye.